Welcome back to another Stampede Blue Colts cast, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Matt Danley. Thank you guys for coming back to the show. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for sharing everything that you guys have been doing. Continue to go to iTunes and share us. If you're here on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, hook us up with that, and uh, we'll continue to roll on as we have been throughout the entire offseason and continue to touch on free agency, the NFL draft, everything involved with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, tonight, we got our friend Zach Hicks back on the line with us, and we've also got a special guest, Colts safety, George Odom. Zach, George, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Oh, yeah, definitely. What you got going on over there, George? Uh, None right now. I know I'm going to go work out around nine, so – yeah, I have all this ball of energy right now up, up inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, coming into the NFL as an undrafted guy, I mean, what is that experience like? Oh, it's mind blowing, it's thrilling. Um, I say one thing from college to the NFL is it's faster, it's way faster. Practice is crazy, it's so fast here and there, here and there. It's outrageous <laughs> but yeah and then um you know my, my biggest question though is uh the undrafted process you know like uh you, you had a great college career you were conference player of the year uh you go undrafted which is uh, you know definitely uh, disappointing uh but what was the process like afterwards were you getting like uh calls from a bunch of teams there was it just the colts like how, how did you end up with the colts after being undrafted so i came on a 30 visit with the colts before the draft and then um a lot of teams are hitting me up because my after pro day because my teammate ran a four three three Trey Smith he played for the Kansas City and it's like he started telling teams about me and then teams go and look and then they start calling me on Facetime a lot of teams head coaches texting me that oh man it's crazy then when the draft roll around I see my teammate go fifth fifth round to Kansas City Chiefs so I'm like oh man and then my uh my agent called me. He's like, hey, I'm on the phone with the coach right now. They tell my dad, I don't want to get off the line, get off the line right now. And then I started getting a phone call from Cincinnati, Atlanta, all the other teams out of nowhere. Just like I ain't even heard from the team. Now they just calling, asking, asking me to do a free agent deal with them. And then, but I felt most comfortable coming to the coach because I was looking like, okay, well, they got a first rounder, they had Clay Gathers, they had. Farley, they had I was like, okay, they don't have that many safety. So I was like, well, I think I can I think I can make this team. And you definitely did. You not only you did you make the team, but you made an impact. And that, that's that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about as to, as well. Beginning of the season, there's so there there's other guys in, involved in this safety mix, you know, battling for the uh battling for the roster. You see some guys leave. You see some guys move. You see some other guys get hurt. You stay one of those guys that stayed through. Uh, I was at training camp and watched you through there, and you continued to be a face. You continued to be a face in uh, in on special teams, and, and even in the first couple groups, you were heavier in the rotation. Getting into a mix like that in a, at an NFL camp and knowing that you've got a legit chance to make this roster, going from that – to actually being on the roster and contributing throughout the season, man, that has to be uh, fascinating. It has to be an unreal feeling. Oh yeah, definitely. And then my coach Allen, he was on me the most about out of everybody. The, I'm talking about out of the whole team. He was on me every day. <laughs> if I make if I make a little mistake, he was yelling at me, George. Da, da, da. I was like, oh my god, I think I'm doing everything wrong. But at the end of the day. We went back and watched the film from when I first got there to in rookie mini camp to you can do it halfway through the season. You can see it dramatically change because I was an outside linebacker in college. Mm. So it's like my steps and everything else got better. Like I could break on the ball. I can really break. I can really backpedal when I first got there. I could backpedal, but not like great. And, you know, working every day. I remember in camp, man, I remember one time I had to, uh, had to call my old lady and was like, hey, look, I'm going through these things. Da, da, da. Did she see me at first? She was like, well, God not going to put you in a place where he know you can't succeed. So it's like after that moment, it's like, okay, I got to step my game up. Like then my coach telling me, hey, man, you last at the list. I, that's when I really started my mind started going wrong. So you last at the list. You got to make plays. <laughs> then the next day, I came up with two picks mm -hmm. and I punched the ball out. I was like, okay, 
I said, I got you, coach. From now on, I got you. And I know that we were then, talking about it then, and that was when we started noticing you in there as well. So, I mean, it yeah. was definitely uh, a position where we're in camp, we're talking about you. Some people don't know you yet, and a lot of us are uh, – I know that at Stampede Blue, we talked about him, about you quite a bit, George. There's a – it was fun and interesting to see you start making plays. That's always one of our things anyways. When you see a guy that comes in undrafted and you see that he's got the skill set and it's interesting, not only that, but how much of your body style or body, uh, I mean, composition did you have to change going from where you played like uh, linebacker at times in college to playing a safety? Was, was there a full body composition change with that? So... And college, actually, I weigh a lot less. Really? So I, I was like a rover type. So we call it yeah. a rover. But it's technically an outside linebacker kind of. Right. But in the NFL, it's called a nickel. But in the NFL, it's more pass than run. But in college, it was more run than pass. Okay. So I played heavy in the run, slightly in the pass. So it's like I was fast. I got to the ball fast. I was just side to side shuffling. But when I got to the league, it's like, I had to worry about like really my 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 traps because I'm coming from further away and they got more head of steam. So I had to really build on my shoulders really to sustain that because I had um, my last game my senior year I had tore partially torn my shoulder. So it's like I had to work dramatically on that hmm. alone. So I yeah. gained from college. I was like probably barely one ninety. Wow. And now and now I'm over 200, so how much how much work did you have to put into that to to get your weight up? 5 hours a day of working out. Man, that's and like crazy. Yes, I know. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Every moment I hated 5 hours a day cuz my body is different from everybody, so it's like 5 hours a day working out and like 3 hours of eating. So it's oh. like So what's your calorie count then uh in the off season? Oh, I, I mean, right now I'm working out about two hours a day. So it's like, it, I just, I just be eating. <laughs> I just hey, eat. we're doing the same thing. We're, we're just eating, but we're just not doing the workout part. <laughs> That's right. I oh, yeah. working out two hours a day. We're definitely eating though. Oh, I mean, I'm eating more than two hours a day for sure. <laughs> so I just came from training right in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And so before I went to training, I was actually working out from five. No, I went up to around six thirty. So I started hooping. I started playing basketball from like six thirty to about eight, and I come and eat. And then at nine o'clock, I go work. Actually, work out. Like I start to work out like at nine thirty, because my friend get off work and all the other stuff. So we get in the weight room. We started working out at nine thirty. We should be getting done like at eleven. So from 6.30 to 11, I'm, I'm really rolling. Hmm. That's crazy. So I, had to get used to, I had to get back used to the, that field, though. So let's talk about a little bit about making this roster as an undrafted free agent. Not only did you make the roster, but like I said, you had some turnover there at the safety position. But really working for Chris Bauer, Matt Eberflus, I mean, all of this entangled, uh, obviously Coach Reich as well. But how much did that, in in your mind, validate your work ethic that they believed in you to come in there and be that rotational guy and ended up getting a ton of work this season? Oh, man, that's – just say the amount of work that everybody in that building put in is crazy. Like the coaches be there after we leave and, like, the coaches be there before we get there. And I know I get there like at 5.36. I started getting there at like 5.36 in the morning and leaving. I get there before the sun rises. I get I leave after the sun sets. Mm. And they be there all day. And so it's like with us having to put all that time in, I mean, you got to you gotta have respect for the person. So it's like me putting all that time and effort in. I only missed two days of practice out of the whole time I've been there. That's insane. And, yeah. And everybody else, I mean – I've never seen nobody not miss that many days for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when you first came into the, the, you know, the team this year, after making the roster out of preseason, you were mostly a special teams guy. Uh, did you 
play a lot of special teams in college to prepare you for that, or was it like a new role for you? No, nah, uh, that's the only why I came, really, because uh, special teams in college was crazy. I had 91 tackles on special teams in college. Sure. So, yeah, I was just out there. I remember one game, <laughs> we were playing this team. We had like 70 points, but we kicked the ball off like 11 times. So I made nine out of 11 tackles. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, like I'm running, I'm running full speed. I don't care if it's the last play, I'm running full speed. I mean, that's why I enjoy I enjoy special teams. I really enjoy just being on the field, being a dominating player. That's my mentality. Right. Every play, every play, somebody gotta get it. Who was your biggest uh who made who made the biggest impact on you in terms of a player player relationship this year? In the locker room, um mm-hmm. Or on the field, well, you know, in terms of say, the, maybe helping. I say the person that really helped me get through everything is David Thorne, DT. Really? Like D- DT is probably the best guy out there to come to for anybody. Like, he's the number one guy. I recommend him for anything. <laughs> if I know, if I need some, I can always call on DT. He's always there, no matter what's going on. Any day, anytime, I. Rain, sleet, or snow. I call on DT, but the player, I say, that helped me out, that built my confidence up. Well, it was, it was kind of two players: Corey Moore and uh, Mike Mitchell. Mm. So Corey, he came in, he came in before Mike, and he was like, "Hey, man, uh, you know, you got all this potential, man. To go out there and show them every day. Like you got to have money. You got so they. My coach, I would say, you got to have equity in the bank." To be able to start, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna have you're not gonna be able to start without no equity. Like they're not gonna throw you out there like, well, let's see if he can try. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, he was telling me that he was boosting my head up, but then when Mike Mitchell came in, he was t- he told the coach, like, hey, he's good enough. I trust him. And that's one key thing we we talked about this year. Trust, toughness, and team. Like, and since Mike came in, Mike Mitchell is like everything changed when Mike came in. He really he improved the whole defense. He told he taught people how to study film, how to watch film, what to look for, at the, shoot at the numbers, at the thirty yard line, everything. That man is a genius. Is that and, I, this is something I wanted to know, honestly, from a player uh, player player point uh, perspective. So when you get a guy who comes in there and that who can kind of are in, in that kind of a situation, a veteran leadership guy, how much does that kind of cleared up turn Japanese into English in terms of somebody actually? Like find, giving you that little extra way to study and maybe basically study e or study smarter, not harder. I mean, is there is it is it just kind of like that? You know that that light comes on when a certain person comes in there and can drop it to you like that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like don't you don't listen to everybody's opinion, but I feel like that man was probably smarter than the coaches. Mm. So it's like. When he, when we break down, break it all down, it's like, oh, everybody made mistakes. Like he made a few mistakes, I made a few mistakes, but he told me this: just limit your amount of mistakes to bare minimum, and forget the forget the last play that you already messed up on. And it's like, man, that man is just a genius. Like I, I don't know, it's it was something about him that when he came in the locker room, the presence of him. Like everybody knew, like okay, I got respect for this man. How much on the back end? Did you guys, how much confidence on the back end of that defense this year? You guys were among the league's best in terms of not allowing big plays downfield. That was obviously a focus within this scheme. You know, the scheme change this year. How how much of the confidence when you guys were looking at your numbers? You guys are going into film sessions with your coaches every single day, every week after practices, looking at what you're doing, looking at your rotations on the back end. How much did that validate what you guys were doing and find the chemistry being able to improve throughout the season? So you know we we started off one and five, right, and then we had a players only meeting, like so no coaches in there, just players, like. Like Andrew talk, Jabal Shear talk, and like all the older people talk that have been in the league before. And like we got the talent in the room to win games, stuff like that. And then from there, it's like we started watching more film, like actually like breaking it down to like, okay, 
this there's a you got this you got this gap right here i got this gap right here you got this gap right here and he gonna he got responsibility so you got to spill when he does that or you got to scrape when he does this so we all broke it down one by one and then we just really had to, we got to trust each other then we we basically said do your job and nobody else's job and when you do your job I mean, it's unstoppable. Yeah, and I felt like when I was in the game, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through you. I'm not, I'm not slowing down. Yeah, and was that like the big change from the one and five start? You know, going towards the rest of the season, that you guys all kind of accepted your own roles, uh, figured out what everyone, what you all had to do individually to really perform well as a team. Was that the big change that players only meeting and really getting to the root of the problem? Yeah, I, I basically feel like that really helped us like breaking it all down to where it's like okay we're gonna start off simple fast really it's all about speed 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 that's the number one thing we're talking about speed get to the ball no turn down hits like basically like our principles like speed on it three times run to the ball you got to run to the ball like that's my pride and butter right there i'm running straight to the ball craft is you see, I got two flags. I don't care if it's almost dead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the pile. <laughs> <laughs> the way I always put it, we always put it when I watch like a draft prospect is like, you know, they can hit the guys over the middle. I'll pay their fines. It's fine. Just kill the guys over the middle for me. Make the quarterback and the receiver scared of catching the ball over the middle. Oh no! If 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 you catching the ball coming towards me, like you finna you finna catch a thing, <laughs> something to happen. It's gonna be like a car wreck in there. <laughs> I ain't, slow, I ain't slowing down. Oh, we saw it. We saw it. Right. We saw it a couple times. <laughs> there was so much of an emphasis on speed this year. I know that you weren't with the team the previous season, but how much did you hear from the guys who were on the within the other scheme? How much did you see or how much did you hear from them at how much of a different look this team had with the massive inc increase in speed among the defensive side of the ball? You know what's crazy? Nobody talked about last year at all. No. I never heard not one word about last year. Hmm. Not not even one. I don't even know who the, the old coaches were last year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I promise you, I don't. That like, that shows you that your team completely moved forward. And the thing about it is, it's like every week, like I, it's like my memory erases from the team that I just played, and it's all a clean slate for the next team that's coming up. And that's that's all we thought about. Like literally, that's all we did. Like <laughs> I remember one time I asked somebody, hey, who we played last week? They did, they, they didn't remember. They just like, we're gonna play this team this week, and that's all I was worried about. That's all <laughs> At the end of you, day, that's all we worried about. <laughs> would you say that's a lot of, uh, you know, Coach Reich's uh, mentality? Because I know you guys started that the one and no mentality around halfway through the year after the losing streak. Uh, the one and no mentality that you know, next game, just win that next game, go one and no the rest of the year. You think uh, a lot of that? You broke uh, up, Bill Zach. Yeah, Say that again, up, Zach. You broke up, buddy. Um, you hear me? No. Re repeat it. I can hear you now. Sorry, yeah, my fault. Uh, I was going to say that you think a lot of, um, you know, Coach Reich had an effect on that, you know, with his 1-0 uh, mentality, uh, you know, win the next game, don't worry about the last one, don't worry about one after that, just to go 1-0 the rest of the year. You think a lot of that uh, mentality that he kind of instilled in the team was was a big reason why you would forget, you know, the games before or the, the year before? You think a lot of that was the big reason? Yeah, I think that's that really helped us, I feel like, because – you know, some people like to to wasn't like, oh man, I had a bad game last week. I had a bad game last week because you know that's our that's our this our career, right? Our career, like you can have one bad game and get cut the next week, like Monday, starting next week. So some people some people dwell on the past, but for me in college, that's all we talked about. Literally, with Coach Campbell, he's in South Alabama now, but that's all he talked about. Like next game, don't worry about the last snap moving forward and so it's like when he introduced that like oh dang this this seemed very familiar to me like okay next game i'm not ever worried about the last snap i played and it's like i gave up a touchdown like somebody mossed on me or something like that i like dang I get, I get to the sideline i don't even remember it happened i just next play until after the game then people are like oh man what happened 
I'm not ever thinking about that. During the game, it's always the next play because I can always improve from one play to the next play. Okay, well that beat me again to the beat me to the flat. He caught the out route. Well, next time I know what formation they're doing, so now he can't beat me. Do you feel like you're you're throughout this system? Do you feel like okay? Let me and we're gonna get into scheme just real briefly here. Uh, with within the basic Tampa two, however you want to call it, you know, I mean, there's a lot of diversity that you guys bring to that scheme. In general, do you feel that this scheme best fits your style of play? Well. They say picks get money, like bring you money in the long run. But at the end of the day, you can't be selfish. Like that's one thing. My college coach preached about it. Like, and the players mean we preach about it. you can't be selfish. Like, cause selfish is not gonna get you nowhere. Like, you just gotta be a ball player. Like, where wherever you fit in, that's where you're gonna play. Like Clayton Gathers, he played. Free, strong. He played like he Not- played like in a box. So it's like whoever gonna whoever best fit gonna play mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of interceptions, though, I mean, you did get your first career interception this year against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, just how how was like what was that experience like? You know, do you do you solve the ball? Uh, so no, they uh, he's got it right now up in Indy. He he's doing like a little custom little thing on it. Okay, but. At the same time, so the series before that, I sprayed my MCL to the second degree. It was partially torn. Mm. So <laughs> it felt like it was coming in and out like that. Oof. So I came to the sideline and told my special coach, I can't go on Gunner because, like, our off- we just got out. Our offense went out, and then they needed a three and out. So they punched the ball down. But I was the last person. I was like, oh, man, I got to go back out there. I got to go back out there. So I went back out there. They threw a little – Threw the ball to the out route, whatever. And I tap it to the sideline, like, oh my God, my knee felt like it was out of place. Jeez. <laughs> it was hurting bad. And so I got to, I said, man, let me bag up. So man, they didn't get no deep ball on me. So I bag up probably like extra five, probably like 15, 16 deep. And so I just seen the ball tip. And I dove. I said, man, I'm not getting it. But I had it. I got up after I run it. It's like a exciting moment. Like, oh man, I know I can run this back. And I started running. I cut once. I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I cut again. I said, oop, slow down, get tackled. <laughs> <laughs> man, it was, but that was an exciting moment. I was uh, I was laying on the ground forever. Kenny, Kenny was like, get up, get up, get up. We gotta go take this. I was just getting ready to say that. How 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 much did you just could not wait to get off the ground to go get your guys' pose? Oh man, it it that felt the pit, the interception. It felt like I got up like that, but after I fell from the old lineman talking to me, it felt like I was on the ground forever. <laughs> I was like I could not get up. Like he had literally, he pulled me up. <laughs> he pulled me up. You get let go. <laughs> and I was just wobbling down there. I could run in a straight line, but if I try to cut, my knee would pop in oh, now. Jesus, Did you but, you played the next game, right? You played in the next game. Yeah. I missed two days. Jeez. They said they never seen. They said they never seen nobody leg ever do that. Did you get like any shots or anything for it, or you just you just tough through it? No. I, uh, I had got a brace for my knee, and then I had got a tape drop underneath my knee. But other than that, shoot, I got I got treatment every day, and you know I eat right, so it's like your body gonna treat you right if you eat right mm. during the season. So. Man, they say I supposed to have been out for like a month, month and a half. Really? That draft? Yeah. Man, that's crazy. It was like partially torn. It went torn all the way or partially torn. So when you, you're going through what everybody goes through right now, except for the fact that you have that UDFA title kind of hovering over you a little bit, and I don't think that it's a bad thing at all. In fact, I think it's a good thing for you because anytime you can do that come on make plays as a rookie as an undrafted guy you're always going to have that that kind of uh that gravitas given not given to you but it's always going to be there with you knowing that you've got a guy in uh chris boward who likes to not just make the roster better but continually try to make the roster better every single day 
as an undrafted guy, do you feel like that makes you keep that chip on your shoulder in order to continue to be better every single day, fight through anything and everything that you can just to make sure that you are there the following day? Uh, no, I just know. I know my mentality and how I play. Mm-hmm. Somebody going to want me. Right. Because I, I, don't, I don't play for the money. I just play how I love playing with, with a team that loves me. I love in general. That. So I'm going to play regardless. I mean, the money beneficial later on, but right now everything's taken care of. So I have nothing worried about. I love but it. just imagine. So just imagine me coming in as an undrafted free agent, right? And then having a first round guy right here. I think Clayton was like a third round. Mm hmm. And then having a second round, I think TJ Green, was, I think he was second rounder. Yep. So it's like first, second, and third rounder right there in front of me. And then somebody from Notre Dame, Farley, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I, oh, man. I think I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make this team. So it's like at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I got this. I'm making more plays, you know. Man, that's like if they cut me, they, they got to be crazy. Right. Well, you definitely made the team. Now, what's it like going forward then? What is it? Where are you coming into this season now? It's a whole nother draft class. It's a whole nother undrafted group. Um, I mean, you've got to have, I mean, I, I would assume that you have a little bit of that, that extra, you know, uh, will to continue to, to learn. Obviously, that's anybody in your position, but it has to be both fun, exciting, and almost uh, anxiety bringing you know bring some anxiety to it to know that you've got a whole new group of guys coming in um but like you said your play style is one that fits in my opinion not just uh with the colts but it it fits in in multiple looks for the colts so i think that you've got that going for you obviously you made plays you showed out as a rookie you were a special teams contributor uh you you shined immediately in camp what is what is this second season for you, what what is it that you have to prove aside from just every single day going out there and getting better? So my coach, he uh, sat down and told me, like last Wednesday, he was like basically, you make what you want to make. You want you want to be a bag up. You want to be the second string, third string, or you want to start. Like he said, you make it what you want to make it. So I know my mentality. I like to know. I feel like if I'm not in, I feel like the games that I didn't play that much, I feel like we lose. Mm. So I feel like I have I have to start. I have to have people look to me to make them plays. That's my mentality at the end of the day. Like, I got to start. I got to play. So. Do you prefer to I'm, – I'm curious about your preference on the back end too. Do you prefer to stay single? Do you prefer to be in a, a too high look? Do you prefer to be in the box? What, what is your preference out there? I want to catch that pick. I'm, I'm taking that away. <laughs> I don't care who's throwing it. I'm getting it. I'm going to get it. That's, but at the end of the day, uh, it, I mean – it really didn't matter to me. I could be, I mean, it didn't really matter as long as I'm on that field. Because if the ball we throw behind me, I'm running. I'm finna go try to go catch him. Who was your, yeah. your most exciting match? Sorry, Zach. Uh, one more, real Later. quick, and you're off, brother. Uh, who, who, uh, who, who's the, the most exciting matchup for you this year coming into the league? Quarterback, uh, receiver, tight end, any of it? The best match? Well, yeah. The one that took you by, like, not took you by surprise, but kind of was like, okay, well, I've got to watch this quarterback because he's he's a stud, or I've got to watch his tight end because he's dominant, or this this wide receiver takes a lot of crossing routes. You know, any of those things that you just felt like you had the matchup of your season? Oh man, my uh, my coach stressed about everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody. Like, man, DeAndre Hopkins, he stressed about AP, he stressed about. Everybody, like everybody, like any big names, he's talking about Derrick Henry. We was over there trying to light him up like a firecracker. We, but he's stressed about him the most. Like he, 
It didn't matter who it was. Like at the end of the day, it depends on what team it is. That's the person that they're stressed about. Like Tyreek Hill. Nah, that's the one person they really stressed about the whole like when when about to practice against them, play against them. I mean, mm-hmm. like special team wise, it was like okay, we're gonna get keep the ball out of his hands. He's like a threat on special teams. Okay, and then that that's really on the person. They he, what we was talking about. He was like he's out there running Olympic speeds. He's like backyard football. Like we hit his little kids and. and <laughs> So they out there running. He ran like a nine something in the one hundred. I was like, okay, dang, he blazing. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it all depends on who we who we're gonna play. Yeah, Bye. certainly. Bye. Yeah, certainly. Bye. Um, you know, the one thing that you brought up this entire podcast is uh, just your mentality, your competitiveness. Uh, you know, the Colts right now currently just have you and Malik Hooker on the roster. <laughs> that that's all they have right now at safety. A couple guys who are free agents. Uh, regardless who they bring in, say say it's a big name guy like a Landon Collins or a first round guy, uh, with your mindset, are you still gonna be going for that starting spot? Oh, definitely. I don't care who you are. You could be, I want to say Jesus Christ. If Jesus, there, hey, <laughs> I I'd be back up. But at the end of the day, they gonna have to fight me for it. Right. They gonna have to fight me every day, every day. And you better not let up because I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. Got to keep going. Was your pick your most exciting point of the season? What if there was if not, what was your most exciting point in the season? A play or situation or, or anything of that sort? So my most exciting scene, I feel like it really it was a pick, but in the day if my the one game that they really let me start and play the whole game against Tennessee. The mm. first time we played Tennessee. So I played every snap of defense and I played special team also. So it's like at that moment they knew I felt in my heart they knew. Okay, we got somebody that can ball that we could that could play. So we're gonna we can probably develop him more. So I feel like everybody got room to improve me. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna, we're gonna develop him more. And we're gonna see where where we lay where we laid our egg and see what comes out. Yeah, certainly. And I think that's uh that's what we all noticed too over at uh, our site, Stampede Blue. I mean, that was the game where we really are, were all like, okay, this this undrafted free agent has got something here. I mean, Matt, I'm I'm sure you felt the same way. Absolutely, absolutely. We had yeah. uh, we had multiple times where there, you know, we we like I said, a lot of things happened with the safety position. Obviously, you know this, George. Uh, throughout the season we would go through a little bit of everything and your name was the one that continued to come up as one that contributes in several different ways uh, both in coverage and in uh, special teams and and just a little bit of everything Uh, one of my one of my biggest uh, questions is you've got it when you're strapped in and you're looking through and you're reading your key and you're you're sitting back what is that very first snap in the NFL that you took feel like when you are looking across and you see everybody ready to go. I mean, it has got to be like, you're literally about to piss yourself. I mean, I'm, <laughs> so, I mean that, right. I, I mean that honestly, the one game that got me, I was like, wow. Like before we kicked the ball off, it was like, wow. Like I'm looking up. It's like a hundred thousand people in the stands. I feel like it's like all eyes on me. <laughs> Was our first playoff game against Houston? Like, cause yeah. every I lit everybody in the stands had a white towel and was spinning it. Everybody, everybody. I was like, oh my god! Like, I'm looking at my teammates. They're looking at me because I'm like, I think I was the four, so I'm looking left, and everybody looking at me. I look right. Everybody looking at me, and then my teammates are like, they go. And at that moment, it's like, okay, I got, I got to make this play. So it's like my heart is like your heart pounding, but then after that first play, it's like okay, I got it. So that all of that all that anxiety just leaves your body with that first snap, huh? Gone, gone. It's like oh. it, so they did a test. You know how some people be like nervous and stuff like that. Like when something like that happens, yeah. I be I like all athletes. They be we be excited. Mm. Okay, it's 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 exciting like that. It is exciting. Like in college, I was nervous. I I remember one time I just came out from one series. I had to throw up on the sideline because <laughs> my, my nerves were bad. 
But I'm nervous about it <laughs> college. So now it's like, it's exciting to me. I can't wait. I can't wait the next time I strap up. Yeah. Somebody, yeah you, think, somebody got... you think a part of that is just some of the guys you play with too? Like we, we've all seen, uh, we've all heard like the sound bites of a guy like Darius Leonard on the field who's – an absolute maniac, you know, going against other teams and also with how he talks when he's on the field. Uh, do you think just playing alongside those teammates just makes it, you know, more comfortable and more exciting to go out there every Sunday? Oh, yeah, because if you mess up, they on your head, boy. <laughs> they on your head. They can, they can, you can hear that part, but at the end of the day, when you do something good, uh, regardless if you do something good or you do something bad, they got, they got your back. So I know at the end of the day, whoever on that field, all eleven guys on that field, we got our, we got each other back, and we coming with it every play. I know if somebody getting held up, I'm smoking them. <laughs> I'm smoking them, and I know if somebody come loose, I'm I'm trying to chase them down. I'm full speed. George, we really appreciate your time here. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up with my last question, uh, Zach. If you've got another one, you can hit him after this one. But uh, my last question for you, George, is. This is such an interesting and fun defense, especially for Colts fans who have been following it. We've seen things in the past that just were not working. We see a brand new coach, a brand new defensive coordinator, several new position coaches, several new players, massive overturn in the roster here. And this defense, I mean, you guys go, you know, you turn into one of the better run defenses in the league. You're one of the better defenses on the back end in terms of allowing big plays. You guys turn in uh, a linebacking core into a strength that had been a weakness for years. How exciting is it to be a part of a defense now feeling and being a legit part of that defense in yourself? How is it turning this defense into what you guys see the future holding? Just say our head coach told us this. You know, our head coach would come in before, um, you know how the offense defense meet? Mm -hmm. So we come in as a defense. Like our head coach come in, dab up everybody. He tell us who we got to look for and what we got to do to to win this game. Like, basically, it's almost the same thing, but, like, different players. So, it's, I don't know, it's like a family. It's hard to explain. Like, it's one thing that you have to be there and see it to know exactly how it feels, to actually like to be in the room. I'm, I'm grateful that I could be in the room with some of my teammates that, that's in the room mm -hmm. because one in a billion get to see this, like get to get to see actually what I get to see, what I get to experience. And like all the people next to me that's in the room with me, they sit with me. So it's like we have a bond that that's really – Really, like it's hard to break that bond. I I call people that's not even on the team no more. Like, hey man, how you doing? Da 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 da. Cause mm -hmm. like everybody's so tight, we tight knit it. Like the linebacker core, they go out to eat every Tuesday. Us DB, we go out every two, every Monday. And like D line go out every probably Tuesday on Monday. So it's like after after we build our bonds together, we bring it all together as a brotherhood. And it's like, you know, brotherhood is hard to stop that. It's like, it's brotherhood is like grease. It's sticking in blood. Did it feel like that was really natural with your guys' group this year? Because it seemed like it was. Well, at first, when I first got there, you know, undrafted, it's like nobody really talked to you and stuff like that. It's like, dang, man. And then, you know, they make comments. They, they laughing. They pluck, they were playing, joking around. And then I'm uh, almost just out like, man, I don't like these guys. I don't like them. <laughs> and then right, right when we make teams, like, it's like, oh, dang, they bring you in as a family. It's like, okay, we got you on our wing, tight knitted. Can I break that? It's, it's unbelievable. Crazy. Zach, That's awesome. Have you got anything more, Zach? Yeah, just one last question. Uh, it's hard to top that, obviously, when you're talking about the family and the bond there. Uh, my last question, just one thing that I definitely wanted to to find out all year is uh, whose idea was it for the the interception and the fumble uh, celebration you guys have? You know, when you guys run to the camera, you all take your picture. Jacoby Brissett comes from the back and and dives in like he always does. I mean, who, whose idea was it, though, to, to kind of start that celebration that all you uh, defenders do? 
I'm not sure exactly who it was. I just remember our first picture was probably like Kenny. It might have been Kenny. Like he pointed, like he pointed to the cameraman. And like, I don't think I was in. I might have been in. Like all the defense players, all like all the people that was on the field ran to him. But then, like towards the, towards like progressing on through the season, it's like every time we wait, like we on the sideline, we wait, like everybody on defense waiting because everybody up excited, ready to go, like to get in. As soon as the turnover go, go, let go, let go. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta celebrate. You gotta celebrate. You gotta enjoy, uplift your team because right when you do that, the offense see it. The offense go like, oh yeah, let go too, like. That boosts everybody up when you have that, that excitement. Then that Jacoby, is. hey, I had to jump in the <laughs> offensive picture one time. <laughs> Man. Love it. I love it that my guy Kenny Moore started. Kenny freaking Moore, always wearing the shirt during the podcast <laughs> recording. So, uh, but yeah, I'm glad it was Kenny that started it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Man, we can't thank you enough for coming on and being so gracious with your time, my man. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. Um, we're really excited to see what you've got in your second year in Indianapolis. We're really excited uh, to see what you bring to this defense and what the defense does uh, in general and, and basically anything and everything that this Colts team is doing right now because even as a, uh, a diehard Colts fan, I mean, even some of the, the, the fair weather more of the fair weather fans, they're interested in this team because they see everything happening. So uh, best of luck this upcoming year we are pulling for you man and we are definitely fans uh of george odom for sure so thank you for coming on the show with us we really appreciate it thank you for inviting me you know absolutely really, really appreciate that absolutely it was a great time uh thank you guys all for listening thank you thank you to george odom for jumping on the show zach always uh thanks my man for for riding shotgun with me tonight and uh, folks, we're going to talk to you guys later. Make sure you guys are following George uh, and his career because things are looking up. Things are looking good. And uh, this safety group looks to be a very interesting unit uh, heading into 2019. So uh, thank you guys all for listening. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Colts cast.